What's going on, Grace family? Welcome to my YouTube channel, God Good Grace Ministries. Today is a lovely day. It's Saturday. The birds is chirping. And it's been a long time. I've just been studying, getting the word in me, keep pushing forward, living a good life, enjoying the blessings of the Lord. And uh, I hope y'all enjoyed that message that my wife uh, brought forward. With uh, what are you wearing? Which explains about the full armor of God. That was such a blessing. That was such a good teaching. I'm trying to get her to come back on and uh, do another one and stuff. But today I want to talk about how to walk in joy, how to continually have joy in every area of our lives and stuff. And I broke this into four parts. And stuff, which there's, there's probably more parts, but for just this, uh, this, this teaching, I just wanted to keep it nice and simple and just talk about four simple things about joy and how we can continue to have joy uh, when we're going through things and, and stuff like that. And um, as I was doing my, my studies, I realized when I was looking at the word joy and when Joy was spoken of in the Bible by Paul and other people. They were not <laughs> in a, a happy situation. It was, they were not in a happy situation. But yet they said, be joyful. So I've been studying the book of Philippians for about a month now. So I guess you could say this is a deep dive in the book of Philippians. Everything that I'm talking about is coming out of Philippians. And my Bible broke it down into uh, four different parts. You know, suffering, serving, believing, and then the joy of the Lord. And, uh, with joy and giving and stuff like that. And um, I, I just found this is an awesome book. I just found it an awesome book. So I just, I just stayed there because it was just remarkable how, you know, Paul wrote, about being joyful and how to continue to be joyful and he was going through himself so we're going we're going to start and we're going to start looking at joy and suffering all right so let's go ahead and let's lift the bandage off and let's start right there and we're going to talk about Paul's message to the Philippians and to us you know what I'm saying so let's turn to uh, Philippians chapter 1 and we're going to start with three and four. Go on. That should have been ready, right? As you can see, I've been marking up the whole page, just studying hard. And we're going to read this. And I'm going to set the stage while y'all still turn and let you know that Paul, when he wrote this, he was in jail. You know, either I think it's either Rome's or Ephesus, but I can't really find out which one. But either way, he was in jail, and he wasn't free to go. And, and yet, this shows where his focus was. So let's read. We're gonna read three through four. It said, "I thank my God upon every remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine." For you all make a request with joy. You know what I'm saying? You know, I, just, I, just, I just like this because it, it, Paul prayer could have been, Lord, let me out. Jesus, help me. I'm pulling my hair out here, man. I've been, I've been traveling. I've been shipwrecked. I've been, I don't, so much stuff done happened to me. You know, this the Lord free me from my present condition. No, that wasn't Paul prayer. Paul prayer was, I think of you. I thank God that I remember you, Philippians. I remember you. Remember Philippians was the one that, that, that sent money in, helped out and stuff like that. He said, I remember you. And I thank God for you. You're the reason why I'm still having joy in my circumstances because I'm thinking about you 
It's thinking about the work, the word working in you. So let's start right there. One of the keys of keeping your joy in an unhappy situation is number one to remember others. Take the focus off yourself and think of others that are in need. And we ain't got no excuse for this. Everywhere you turn, people are in need. Everywhere I go, I see people in need. When I get phone calls, I see people in need. When I talk to my mother, my mom, her, her, she need a knee replacement. I'm constantly encouraging her and, and praying with her and, and keep spilling the word in her. You know, there, there's people always in need. Even though we're going through, we could put ourselves aside and help others like Paul. Number two, we can recognize the source of our joy. You know what I'm Recognize the source of your joy. Don't let your, your, your present condition rob you of your joy of, of knowing Christ or, or growing closer to Christ. You know what I'm saying? See, we, when we going through and we in a bad situation, we could ball up, we could, we could fold, like a lot of superficial Christians that go to go to church on on Sundays, or they call themselves Christians, but they don't read, they don't pray, they, they don't do anything to draw close to God. I call them superficials. They'll be the first casualty once anything starts to go wrong. Once they back hits against the wall, they will give up on that word in a minute, in a minute. But this right here says that don't don't let your present circumstances rob you. Of your joy of getting to know Christ, you in every situation you can take the opportunity to know Christ. Like this Corona, of, I don't know if I'm allowed to say that on YouTube, so I'm a, I'm, a, I'm just gonna stop right there. This virus, everybody's home, and a lot of people had to be at home alone. Take this opportunity to know Christ, to study the Word more, to see what He's gonna put in your heart for the next person. There's always the opportunity to know Christ. You know, it's always an opportunity to get to know Christ. You know what I'm saying? I, I want to read this scripture to you. Out of Philippians 1, 6. Being, being confident of this very thing, that he which has begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. That's my number third point. That we could, he that completed a good work in you, he will not leave you broken, lost, or forgotten. Now, how great is that? How great to know that that our God still doing work in us and that he's going to continue to do work in us. And that God is so faithful that where he found us, he won't leave us in that condition. He will bring us out of that condition. That That's a good saying right there. Now, that, that, that was so good that I put that on my arm. Uh, on, on my Facebook the other day because God was letting me know that all that he had done in me, he ain't done with me yet. He ain't finished. He got a lot more to do in me. So how, how great to know that when the storm comes and it beats upon both houses, and you talk about Matthew when it says that, you know, one built their house on the sand and the other one built their house on the rock. So I'm going to call it the just and the, uh, the just and the unjust. You know what I'm saying? The one that, that's just right with God took the time to, to dig into the rock, to put, to put the, to study the word, to put the word in his heart, and the one that just quickly, just superficially said, okay, I'm saved, and I'll take what they say. And it said that a storm came and beat upon both those houses, both those houses, but we will not crumble like the house built on sand. That's a promise from God. If we, if we take the time to build into the rock, that we will not crumble like the house built on sand. See, we, we all have problems, but how we go through matters. How we go through is so much different than the world. I remember when my wife lost her job, and she'd been on this job for five years, going on six years, and she probably be getting a real big raise. And she called me and told me at the end of her shift, they fired her. And the first thing I told my wife, okay, your time is up there. Because I knew she did everything. I said, don't you worry. Don't you get upset. Because God was provide. We knew that God is our provider, not that job. So he's going to provide us somewhere else. 
Now she got another job making double, double than what she was making at the other job. Why? Because the way she went through matters. She didn't fold. She didn't crumble. Oh, Lord, what I'm going to do? How are we going to pay our bills? What what to do next? I don't know what to do. No, we had, we've been putting the word in us. We've been studying the word. We've been, we've, been, we've, been, we've been practicing these words. We've been speaking them over our lives. We've been putting them to action. And it works. And it works. Okay, let me see where I'm at. And it works. You know, it doesn't matter. Remember... This happened because of the gospel and for the furthering of the gospel. This, we, we are still in the book of Philippians. Remember Paul said that this happened because of the gospel. These things are happening because I'm standing for the gospel. And it's happening to what? Further the gospel. To bring the gospel further. To keep pushing it along. Look, looking for any opportunity to share what? The good news. And good or bad situation, this is how you, you take the opportunity to share the good news. You know what I'm saying? Now look, I said it once, I'm going to say it again. How we go through matters. How we go through matters. Watch this. Look at Philippians chapter 1, verse 14. We're in that one now. We're on verse 14. I'm going to look at mine. Verse 14. Watch this. This is what Paul said. He said, and many of the brethren in the Lord, waxing confidence by his bonds, are much more bolder to what? Speak the word without fear. Speak the word without fear. I, I just love that. I love that. He says, how we suffer and how we endure will make others, others want to follow behind us. That's, that's amazing to me. That's amazing. That means sometimes you don't even have to say something. Just what you do. How you act. I had I had a situation happen a couple of weeks ago. And the cops were at my house. For something that my kids said at the school. You know, so the kids getting into stuff at the school. So the cops came by here to tell me what's going on. And stuff like that. And my neighbor that lives behind me on the other side. They all, you know, they are, they are, they are, these are wonderful people. I love my whole community. And I was feeling down. I was like, Lord, I, what's going on? Like, I'm serving you. I'm doing everything possible. Like, why don't I see these attacks coming ahead of time? Why can't I stop what's going on? When I'm, I'm, I'm reading, I'm seeking your face. And I felt like, Lord, I, I feel like I just should just not preach, not do anything. It seems like the more I step out, the more I'm going through troubles and problems. And then all the cops always over here, you know, saying, what are my neighbors going to think? And my neighbor came right, like, like five minutes after I thought that, knocked on the door and said, Pastor, I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what's going on, but we got you. We got your back. We love your faith. We love how you stand for God. And inside, I was I I, I wanted to sh just yell out and and just yes, Lord, thank you for the encouragement. Thank you for sending him to encourage me. Cause I needed it. I needed it. How I went through a situation with the shooting. People was watching. I put what God has put in me to action, and it made them. Respect the God in me and the work that God's putting in me, and it, it made him say, "If He could do it, I could do it too," because God that loves Him loves me too. Let's get going. We must make up our minds. It's all or nothing with Jesus. We're gonna honor Christ in our life, or we're gonna honor Him by death. However, it's gonna be. For, for to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Philippians 121. I'm going all the way with Christ. Whether I live a life that, that shows the gratitude or if I die and it shows the gratitude. I want Jesus' name to be on both sides of it. I live for Christ and I die for Christ. See, suffering will take your eyes off of earthly comforts. I guess I got I to gotta explain that a little bit because when I read it myself, but, you know, and, and, the only, and I'm only going to say it like this. 
Suffering take your eye off earthly comfort when you're thinking of God. If you, when you're thinking of the word and not your present circumstances, not what you're going to have. You, if you're thinking about your present circumstances, then you're carnal. That don't mean you're sinning. That just means you're carnally thinking. You're thinking of things of this world. And Romans uh, 8, 6, I think, let me see. I don't want to be wrong. I think Romans 8, 6, I didn't even put this in my notes, but I should have. I should have. Uh, Romans uh, 8, 6. I don't want to quote it wrong. It said, for to be carnal minded is death, but to be spiritual minded is life and peace. That's basically saying, if you're thinking just carnally, your five senses, what you can smell, see, hear, taste, and touch, that leads to death. But this is to think spiritually. That's life and peace. That's life and peace. You're thinking spiritual. You know? And, 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 and going, through, going through with God, it will weed out superficial believers. I always say that. Casualty, uh, casual, casually, Christians will be the first casualties. These are superficials. These are Christians that say they say, but they don't read. They don't study. They, 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 don't, they, they go to church. They do all that, but they don't seek God before, after that. They do everything they want to do. They watch whatever they want to do. You know what I'm saying? They, they act how they want to act. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I learn to forgive quick. I hold no grudges, and I would love people. people that, they, everything that's going on in my life, I have no problem with nobody. Nobody. Going, you know, going through, I, I, I don't go through. I, I, forgiving people, I don't have that problem anymore. I used to have that problem. You know, it used to be hard for me to forgive people. But now I realize, man, forgiving them frees me. It frees me from being attached to that. It frees me from having that bitterness and that hatred growing my heart. So I learned now to forgive quick. I look, I look at it like whatever, they, whatever, if they do something to me, they doing it to God. They doing it to God. They don't have nothing. Their person don't have nothing against me. They have something against the God that I serve. Once you say Jesus, say everybody say they serve God, but once you say the name Jesus, there is a spiritual attack against the name of Jesus. You know, if you notice, there's a spiritual attack against prosperity and healing. When you say prosperity and healing, there's an attack that come up against that. Like, why wouldn't you want to learn how to prosper and be in health? <laughs> but that's another story. That's another story. You know, you know, suffering also is strengthens the faith of those who endures. And I didn't put this in there, but you know what? You know, it, it, it's stripping people that are watching you. You know what I'm saying? It, it's stripping people, not those that's not saved. Well, I'm talking about people that are, are saved, that are following Christ. And, and they see that you're going through and you can hold on. And, and they got word in them. But they, 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 they seeing you, like Paul say, follow me as I follow Christ. Sometimes you need an example. Sometimes you need to look at somebody to see how they doing it. And like, if, they, if you see them get through, I can get through Amen. Let's keep going. It serves as an example to others who follows us. Here you go again. How we go through matters. What we say matters. Everything we do with under Christ matters. Because I don't have to speak words to you all the time to witness to you. My life is a witness. My testimony is a witness. The way my house prosper, the way my family prosper, the way that it overflows to my neighbors to where I got so much that I offer to my neighbors. And now they're prospering because why? Because God don't just give me just enough. Everything is overflowing. My cup overflow and run us over. You know what I'm saying? He came and gave me life and gave me what? Abundantly. He didn't just say just give me a lot of life. You know, abundantly. That means too much life in this world, lacking nothing. Everything is always efficient to, to, to be to, to extended towards me to all good works. I got I got all that I need. I got all the resources of heaven at my exposed disposal. And so do you. That is something to be what? Joyful about no matter what you're going through. You can look at it and say, God, I know you got it under control. I might be missing the mark, but Lord God, 
give me a word that would that would show me what I need to do. You need a job, then you you say, Lord, you know, help me find the job that you want me to have. You know, lead my foot, lead my feet. Open the doors. And guess what our suffering does? It verifies that we have been faithful. It verifies that we have been faithful. You know what I'm saying? You, you going to, if you go against the devil, you're going to bump into him. But if y'all, you and the devil traveling down the same road, you ain't going to never know who's bumping into him. While you walk, walking right beside him, he's pickpocketing you. He's stealing from you. He's plotting on you. He's planning on your destruction. I say repent, turn the other way, and be sober and vigilant, and keep your eyes on that devil, and rejoice in the Lord. And remember, we're talking about rejoicing here, having joy, you know what I'm saying? And I'm going to use Paul as an example here. If you look in Acts chapter 14, verse 19, and I can't turn it for now because of time's sake, but if I ever preach this live, I'll take my time to draw this out. But if you look at Acts 14, 9, I mean 14, 19, Paul was stoned. To the point they soon he was dead. Acts 16, 16 through 24, he was jailed because he because he cast the spirit out of a woman that just kept bothering him. Not he wasn't doing nothing to her. But it said that and, you know, she vexed him day after day until he finally got tired and just cast the spirit out. And what happened? He got beaten and got thrown in jail into the innermost part of the jail. And watch this. But yet, if you look at 2 Corinthians, I'm giving you all these scriptures so y'all can study them out yourself. Chapter 4, verse 17, he called it a light affliction. A light affliction. Why? Because Paul looked at the hope his joy for others would bring and it, it took his eyes off himself. He looked at what he's going through and how he was going to prosper others and it took his eyes off himself and he kept on going. He kept on going. Sometimes I don't want to uh, make a video because I'll be, I'll be tired because I have so much going on. But then I look at how this video, this word will help others. And I think about how it'll help others. And so I press forward. That's what Christ did. Christ looked past himself. He looked past himself and saw what his sacrifice was going to do for all of us. How it was going to remove sin out of the way. How it was going to bring us into fellowship. And he endured the cross unto death. It brought him joy to see what was going to happen. So at that present time, when he was going through pain, his mind wasn't on that. So when you're suffering, the way to stay in joy is to put others before yourself. Put others before yourself. Think about what others are going through. And it will help you. It'll help you rejoice. It'll help you to stay in communion with God. It'll keep you from robbing. It'll keep it, it, it'll keep your presence. We said this. It'll keep your circumstances from robbing you from the joy of knowing Christ. It will keep you from robbing joy. You have hope in your joy. Let me see how many minutes I got on this. I already been talking about twenty-four minutes. And I got a lot to go. Who, who, you know what? Since this is four parts, because there's a lot. I have a lot. So since this is the four parts, I, I'm going to stop right there. I'm going to stop this video right here. And I'll just make three more videos. Or how many more videos I probably can make. But I still, we still got to talk about joy and serving. And then I want, we're going to talk about joy and believing. And then the last one is going to be, of course, joy in the Lord. And so, so I just want. So let's start off slow. I, I figured I, I thought I can get all this done, but I guess I couldn't. And so, but I just want you to understand that how we walk in joy, and how and how to keep your joy, 
when you're going through things. And the first thing we talked about was suffering. If we if we learn to put others before ourselves and and, and put them first, we we can continue to keep our joy intact. And I and I know this is how God wants us to be, with love towards one another. Okay, so until next time, you know what I'm saying? I, I'm probably going to be in the same shirt because I'm going to just sit here and record all of them and have them ready to go. But until next time, I love you, Grace family. <laughs>